we're recording. All right, 4A, laugh out loud. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> okay, um, number five. So this is getting into um, actual rates of change of quantities, uh, not just uh, you know changing y, y values with respect to x. Imagine a sphere, okay? Uh, the radius is decreasing. So as we mentioned the other day, there's lots of things now related to the sphere that are changing as the radius gets smaller, right? The surface area is getting smaller. Uh, we said the density might be getting bigger, right? Um, the volume is getting smaller. So lots of things are changing and they're all related to that. Um, when the diameter of the sphere is six feet, uh, so imagine that now we have our camera, right? If anyone ever travels with a camera, I mean, what are the odds someone just happens to have a camera with them, you know, at all times? Uh, but they take a picture right at the moment when the diameter is six feet. And in the very next instant, it's smaller than that. It's gone forever, but you captured it at that moment, at that instant. That's the calculus part, okay? So at that moment, with respect to the radius, later on, we're going to do it with respect to time. How fast is the volume of the sphere changing? How fast is the surface air changing? And how fast is the diameter changing? And it says to explain your result. Okay, so this is a taste of uh, what we call later related rates. Um, and, and it's a good, good categorical term because uh, as I already mentioned, when one thing related to this or one, when one thing in the sphere is changing, lots of other quantities are changing um, and they're all related to each other because they're in the same system. Okay, so for a problem like this, what we want to do is draw a picture if, if we don't already have one. So we do have a picture drawn. Uh, it's a sphere. And the most important uh, variable in a sphere is the radius, which is labeled as little r, okay? So uh, the diameter, remember, let's, let's come up to the side here. The diameter, which I'll call d, is related to the radius how? Twice, twice. twice the radius, yeah. And I only bring that up because it mentions something about the radius. So um, I'm going to use a blue here. All right. So the diameter is 2r. Um, when, this is an important part right here, because that's going to reference your moment in time. And it may not actually reference time itself. It might not say two seconds after we got there. It's going to reference some moment in time that usually uh, involves the specific size at a moment. So when the sphere is six feet, so, uh, or the diameter is, so that's when D equals six. And at that same time, that's when R equals what? Three, yeah. I mean, you could say, you could solve this for R if you want it. R is gonna be D halves or one half D. So uh, as I mentioned on whenever the last time we taught was, uh, I put this inside of an old fashioned camera. I put a little flash cube on it because those quantities are only good at that moment, okay? Um, and that is the moment in time that, that we're talking about. So how fast is the volume of the sphere changing? So we're gonna give ourselves a target. Um, you can either say that's gonna be V prime with respect to R, or if you write it in Leibniz notation, the derivative of V with respect to R. And I prefer that one right there, simply because when we get to what's called implicit differentiation, we might have multiple variables and it might not be a function of a single variable. So Leibniz notation uh, again has that quotient feel to it. But this is our target, right? So that's what we're interested in finding. Uh, what else do we know? Uh, imagine the sphere, the radius is decreasing. So let's go ahead and say that dr, rate of change of the radius with respect to r, well, I don't even, we don't want to do dr, dr. It's getting smaller. Okay. Um, so here's what I want to do. I need to be able to relate the volume to the radius. And in a sphere, what is that formula? I think we talked about it. You have to memorize it. It's going to be four thirds pi r cubed. Yeah, memorize, memorize. Or any version of that. There's the volume. Okay, so this would be like, quote unquote, your position equation or position function, okay? It doesn't tell you anything about how fast anything's changing. It's your quote unquote position function. If you know the radius at that moment, you can figure out the position of the volume or the size of the volume. If you know the volume at that moment, you could figure out the position of the radius, okay? So it's analogous to position. We want the velocity 
right, of the volume. We want to know how fast the volume's changing. So we need the derivative, all right? So if we look at our equation here, um, it is a function of R. So if you want to write that as V of R instead of just V, that's fine. I'm not going to do that. Do we know how to take the derivative of something like that with respect to R? Sure. So let's go ahead and take the derivative of both sides. Now, if you want, we can get in the habit of doing this. This DDR, remember, this is your verb, and it indicates your method. Remember, it's not just about getting the right answer. It's about communicating our results. Now, you don't have to do that here because when we go straight from V to DVDR, it's kind of implied. But it's that little extra thing that you can do. Uh, and, and later on, it'll be required in a certain situation. But anyway, if you develop that habit right now, you're in good shape. All right, so let's go ahead and take the derivative of both sides. I'll use a different flavor here. What would be the derivative of V with respect to R? Well, it's just DV DR, right? Or V prime, right? Just like if it were Y, it would be Y prime or DY DX. And then on the right side, what rule am I gonna use to differentiate that? It's written in the form AX to the N, right? Or AR to the N. So we'll just use the power rule, right? Multiply and subtract. Four thirds pi is a constant. So it's three times four thirds, four, right? The threes divide out. So there's four pi times R to the second. And because it's with respect to R, that's it. Now, this should be no surprise to you, or maybe it is. Um, do you recognize the equation four pi R squared? I don't know if you have a lot of experience working with spheres, like maybe you play basketball or maybe you Yes, and that is actually the equation for the surface area of the sphere. It just so happens, you can call this A if you want. The rate of change of volume with respect to the radius is not just the rate of change of volume, it tells you how fast the volume is changing, but it gives you the position function for area, okay? That's just like if you think of it as a two-dimensional thing, if you think of a circle, Okay, the formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared. If you were to take the derivative with respect to r, you get dA dr. And what's the derivative of pi r squared? 2 pi r. And do you recognize that? That's the formula for the circumference. Yeah. So when you have a three-dimensional formula for something, its derivative with respect to the variable gives you the two-dimensional measure for that. Okay. And if you took the derivative of the two-dimensional, you get the one-dimensional measure. I don't know what that would be for a circle. Um, the derivative would just be two pi, okay? But that's kind of cool. So it kind of gives us two things, all right? So anyway, uh, we come back over here and this is the formula that we're using. And now all we got to do is plug in, okay? So remember when you're going from a formula with variables to plugging in a number, you have to indicate it. Well, there are several ways to indicate it. We're trying to find dVdr. So this is the variable that's unknown. We just need to know what the radius is at that moment. Do we know what the radius is at the moment? It's three. So how do we indicate that? Well, you could do it several different ways. You could say um, when uh, r equals three colon, and then you can plug in, right? dVdr would equal four pi times three squared, or you can do, um, if, you, if you use the derivative notation, you could say V prime of three equals so on and so forth. Or here's the other way to do it. And I like this better. Um, in Leibniz notation, you would say DV dr, and then you do this uh, vertical bar on the back end. And then on the bottom, you put R equals three. Okay, that's called the evaluation bar. I think we've mentioned it once, or the when bar. It's equivalent to um, the parentheses on the function notation when you plug in the three, okay? Uh, so that we read that as the derivative of V with respect to R evaluated at R equals three, okay? And then you don't have to say when R equals three because you're indicating it. So I'll just go ahead and keep going with that one. That gives you four pi times three squared 
which I'm running out of room to work straight down. So what is that? That's nine times four, that's 36 pi. Okay. Now here's where we gotta be careful. What are the units of 36 pi? Well, in this question, we wanna know how fast the volume is changing. So again, you go back to Leibniz notation and look at the quotient. You can read that horizontal bar as per. Our answer should be in units of volume per units of radius, right? So what are the units of volume if we're measuring it in feet? Feet cubed, right? Per, and the units of the radius would be feet. And we would leave it like that. 36 pi cubic feet per foot. Now let's look at another context. If you were to simplify your units, what is cubic feet divided by feet? What are you left with? Feet squared. And square feet is a measure of athleticism, right? Yes. Yeah. No, it's a measure of what quantity? Area, right? So what would be the surface area of the sphere at that moment? It would be 36 pi square feet. But that's not what we want in this case. We wanted to know how fast the volume was changing. So let's go ahead and write our sentence now. I don't know if it says to explain our result. I'm gonna have to borrow some room from down here. So this goes back to the cold yam idea, right? We start with that independent variable. When r equals three feet, okay? And you can abbreviate it there, but if you don't put units, you're gonna lose the check. So there's your adverbial clause, introductory adverbial clause, comma, comma, the volume is, and then we say the words increasing or decreasing. And this one would be increasing or decreasing. This one's kind of interesting because we don't have, um, yeah, it's we're working with scalar quantities here. We know the radius is decreasing. So what should be happening? Should be getting smaller, right? Later on, we're actually gonna be dealing with vector quantities. So when R equals three feet, the volume is decreasing by, and then we answer it as 36 pi cubic feet, Okay, and this is what Mrs. Skirhawk was just asking about because it's one of those things that takes a little bit of getting used to. Cubic feet, and now we don't put the slash. We write it out per foot or each foot or every foot, okay? You should always have on your sentence a something or per whatever, and then everything else gets backed up. So if you're talking about a rate of change of volume, you answer it in volume units, okay? All right, have a great lunch. Um, we'll, 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 we'll do both part Bs when you get back.